this neighborhood may look perfectly safe, but it's not. A silent radioactive killer could be lurking inside as many as half of these homes. Colorless, it's odorless. Uh, you can't detect it with your senses. In every neighborhood in Colorado, the risk is there. It's happening right now in the room around us, right now, inside your lungs right now. And if you don't protect your home, the consequences could be deadly for you or your family. It causes more, you know, fatal cases or deaths per year than the sum total of all the other environmental things that we are concerned about. What is this elusive killer? And what can you do about it? Stay with us as we expose the truth about radon, the invisible killer. You can test for it and install a system in your home to get rid of it. But what exactly is radon? Radon is a gas which comes out of the ground. It's coming from the gravel that underlies your home or the soils that underlie your home. Uh, in some places it, it comes from the bedrock that's underneath that. Radon is almost impossible to detect. It's colorless and odorless, so you can't see it, smell it, taste it. It sounds harmless enough, and it would be, except for one little thing. Radon is radioactive. EPA classifies radon as a, a class A carcinogen, which means they have direct confirmed evidence that it does cause cancer. It is the uh, primary cause of lung cancer in people who don't smoke. Radon is a cancer-causing radioactive gas that's rising out of the ground right now. And as it rises, it could be making its way into your home. It's just a natural event and it's happening all over the world. Radon is formed as part of the natural breakdown of uranium in rocks and soil. As the uranium decays, it releases radon gas that rises to the surface. And it's been happening for years and years and years that radon's being created and getting into the outdoor air. Here in Colorado, and especially in the metro area, radon is of heightened concern because of the geology of the Rocky Mountain West. Colorado happens to be higher in radon than many, many states because we have more uranium in our soil than most people do. In fact, the radon content of our rocks and soil is so high, the Environmental Protection Agency ranks Colorado as seventh among the U.S. states for radon risk. Homes in 12 Colorado counties are at risk of having worrisome radon levels, while the homes in the other 52 counties are at risk of having dangerously high radon levels. But it's at a high likelihood that there is radon gas in many homes in Colorado. One key reason for our high radon risk is all the granite rock we see throughout the mountains and the foothills. A lot of the bedrock in Colorado is granite. There's also metamorphic rocks that have come from granite. And then we have the eroded products of granite, the gravels and sands that are, that are out in front of the front range that most of our large cities sit on. Granite is known to be very rich in uranium and is a common source of radon gas. But granite is not the only source of radon. And even if there is no granite anywhere near or underneath your home, you could be at risk. No matter where they've looked or measured radon throughout the country and all different types of geology, they've always been able to measure a certain amount of radon. So it's not a question of whether I have it or not, it's a question of how much do I have. Fortunately, radon is not a health risk when you're outside hiking or biking. When you're out in nature, whatever radon is being produced is being diluted very quickly uh, by the air that's uh, swirling around us. It's only when radon rises up through the soil and into your home that it becomes a concern. The problem is when it gets trapped in a home and you're breathing high levels, it's not really diluted. And radon doesn't just rise up into your home. Because of a natural vacuum between the foundation and the soil, it actually gets sucked in and is pulled up through every level of the home. Most homes, unfortunately, suck. And by that, I mean the lower levels of the home are usually at negative pressure to the outside. So air naturally wants to flow into the home from under, underneath the house. This creates a very small but very definite vacuum right at the floor level in the basement. 
Radon can be sucked into your home through the tiniest openings, like cracks in the foundation or gaps around the plumbing. Crawl spaces are especially dangerous because of the amount of exposed dirt. But even having a basement with a concrete floor isn't enough to stop radon. It will always find a way in. You've got a crack right here. And this will be around the whole perimeter of the house. You will have where the wall and the floor, the wall is poured first and then the floor is poured afterwards. And the floor usually shrinks a little bit so that you have a crack. It can be anywhere from a thin crack to I've seen them as much as a quarter of an inch and the gas comes in there. You also have plumbing penetrations. This one's good and tight. Some of them may not be quite as tight for where the drain pipes and stuff go. You have a floor drain right here. It is just the combination of all of them allow it to come in. Even the drain in your shower is an invitation for radon to invade your home. And that's what makes radon gas so dangerous. If enough radon is sucked into the home over a long enough period of time, everyone in the home is at risk of developing lung cancer. All it takes is breathing in air that's contaminated with high levels of odorless radon gas. If you have radon in a room, and it's, you have radon in the air, it's very unstable and it breaks down to other elements. We collectively call those radon decay products. So when you breathe in, you breathe in radon and the radon decay products. When you exhale, you exhale the radon. And the radon decay products stay in your lungs. Dr. James Burkhart of the Western Regional Radon Center is able to show us exactly what radon decay particles can do to your lungs by mixing a little dry ice and some rubbing alcohol in a radon saturated device called a cloud chamber. Like the radon in the air, the radon in the cloud chamber is decaying and creating radon decay products. As the decay products break down even further, they release tiny blasts of radiation called alpha particles. Imagine this is somebody's lung. What you are seeing is not the alpha particles themselves, but rather the trails they leave as they pass through the chilled rubbing alcohol. Those are the things that hit the lung cells that cause the lung cancer. That's it. It's the radioactive blast of the alpha particles and not the radon gas itself that causes lung cancer. It's estimated that an alpha particle can travel through about five or six lung cells on the average and in doing so it damages those cells. You don't have to do anything to have alpha particle damage other than breathe. It's the damaged cells and it damaged DNA that can then mutate and form a cancer. And that's especially alarming because lung cancer is one of the deadliest cancers of all. Lung cancer is a very difficult cancer to survive. It has the lower survival rate of any cancers. The Surgeon General estimates more than 20,000 people die each year of lung cancer caused by inhaling radon decay products in their homes. 350 of those deaths happen right here in Colorado. Many of those lung cancer victims had never smoked a single cigarette. Radon is the, is the second leading cause of, of lung cancer. Um, and among non-smokers, it is the leading cause of, of lung cancer. For non-smokers, radon exposure is almost as dangerous as smoking, and it's more likely to cause lung cancer than exposure to secondhand smoke. And for smokers, radon exposure is a double whammy. Smokers double their risk of getting lung cancer uh, by both smoking and being exposed long-term to radon. It's like a clean smoke. I mean, if you smoke, you get all sorts of other tars and things in your lungs, whereas with radon, you don't have that. But quite frankly, the mechanism between smoking causing lung cancer and radon is the same mechanism. And that's why you cannot distinguish a person who has lung cancer through an autopsy if that came from smoking or if it came from radon. With more than 20,000 fatal cases each year, radon-induced lung cancer claims more lives than drunk drivers. It kills five times the number of people who drown each year and more than seven times the number of people who die each year in home fires. In fact, if the radon level in your home is high enough for long enough, the risk of getting lung cancer is just as high as if you and your children had spent the same number of years working in a uranium mine. What the health effects are based on, their studies of, um, of uranium miners, and, and basically what they try and do is equate 
a residential exposure, your, your risk uh, or your risks from your exposure in your house to say what some miners were exposed to over a certain time where they know that these miners actually contracted lung cancer and, um, you know, and, and there were mortality rates associated with that. We know that radon causes lung cancer to the same certainty as we know any scientific fact. Despite the overwhelming evidence, many people are able to ignore the risks of radon because lung cancer develops slowly over decades of exposure. And during that time, there are no symptoms to signal that anything is wrong. There's no way to do a blood test, for example. There's no way to do a, a, a scan of your body and say, oh, look at the radon particles in there. But no, that doesn't happen. You don't have the, uh, the itchy eyes or coughs or anything like that. Uh, I mean, you breathe the radon in, you, you exhale it. And the impact of the body uh, it happens very, very slowly. Part of its difficulty is that there is no outward consequence. You can have radon in your home for as long as you live in it and have no way to detect that, that you have the radon. When you get to the point of actually knowing that you have lung cancer, by that time, it's too late. That is, unless you test your home for radon. Radon test kits like these are the only way to know for sure whether you're being exposed to harmful radon in your own home. The EPA recommends testing for radon every two years, even if you've tested it before and haven't had a problem. It's very house specific because the radon only comes from directly beneath and right around that home because of that and because how inexpensive it is to test a home for radon. We recommend that all people test their home. Fortunately, radon testing is easy and inexpensive. Do-it-yourself test kits cost between $10 and $30, depending on the type, and they're available in most hardware and home improvement stores. Test kits are also sold at a discount through several Colorado counties and the National Safety Council. When shopping for a radon test, it's important to choose one that's clearly labeled as approved by the Environmental Protection Agency or the National Environmental Health Agency. You want to look for labeling on there that says that it's EPA approved or NEHA approved. Here we have your long term. What's long term? There are two types of tests. A long-term test measures your average radon exposure in your home over an extended period of 3 to 12 months. Also, we have your short-term. A short-term test can be completed in a matter of days. Okay, well, I think I'll just take the short-term one then. The actual strategy uh, for homeowners is do a short-term test. It's inexpensive. And find out, you know, what that potential is. If it's elevated, or at a high level higher than what you want, then do a long-term test. Total's 1183 with tax. Jeanette Lillard and her husband Jerry have lived in their home for 16 years. This short-term test will be their first radon test. Haven't tested, have heard stories on the news about it, have thought about it, but haven't done it. But it's never too late to benefit from a test. When I heard it could cause lung cancer, you know, that really concerned me. So had I known that, I'd have done it a long time ago. The test looks like from the back of the package, it's pretty self-explanatory, and as long as you can take it and follow directions, it looks like it should be fairly easy to do. To conduct the test, carefully follow all the instructions on the package. These include closing all doors and windows 12 hours prior to starting a short-term test, and keeping them closed, except for normal coming and going, for the entire duration of the test. Be sure to run your heat or air conditioning as you normally would during the test. And finally, the test should be placed in the lowest livable space in the house. We don't want to test crawl spaces because people don't live in crawl spaces and root cellars and things like that. But if it's a livable space, we would recommend that you test that. In Jeanette and Jerry's home, that means testing in their unfinished basement. There's quite a bit of time spent in the basement over a year's period because it is a, a hobby center. Primarily it's used for my husband's hobby which is model trains. Oh I spend uh, hours and hours down here. I have uh, my trains, my slot cars. Uh, if I have anything to work on, my, I have my little workbench over there. You just open them up and set them out and leave them for 96 hours. Okay. A few days later, all Jeanette needs to do is send the test vials off to the lab in the envelope provided and wait for the results to be sent back to her. Well, it's easy. Yeah, there's nothing to it. It'll be nice to know, I guess. It'll be more nice to know that, that you've actually done the test and 
you don't have to worry about it. But the peace of mind for what was $11 and some odd cents, it's well worth it. When the results come back, the home will get a radon rating measured in something called Pico Curies per liter. A Curie is a measure of radiation that's named for the famous French chemist Madame Curie. And a Pico Curie is one trillionth of a Curie, so it's a tiny fraction of radiation. It says, ooh, test result is 7.1. Okay, that's not good. The air outside averages about 0.4 Pico Curies per liter and is not considered to be a significant health risk. A rating of a little over one Pico Curies per liter is the average for inside air and is no cause for alarm. At two Pico Curies, the EPA says you should consider fixing your home. And if your radon level is four or higher, the EPA says fix it. If you're exposed to four Pico Curies per liter over 70 years, then that equates to what the lowest level at which they actually saw health effects in the miners. At 7.1 Pico Curies per liter, Jeanette and Jerry's test came in nearly twice as high as the EPA action level of four Pico Curies per liter. If a test comes back at or near four Pico Curies, the best advice is to retest. The first thing you should do is repeat the test. I never recommend anybody mitigate their home based on one test. Retesting can be done with either a short-term or a long-term test. It's not panic. Even if you have high levels in your home, um, it's not like there's a reason to move out of the house. Even if it takes you a year to get the information, that's not going to measurably increase your risk. The Lillards have chosen to retest with a long-term test that will take several months to complete. If the results are similar uh, and they're elevated, then certainly you need to start t taking a look at uh, uh, mitigating your home. No matter how high the radon level is in a home, the problem can be fixed easily in about a day by installing a radon mitigation system. And the cost is surprisingly low. The mitigation systems we install run from about currently $850 to normally $1,000. If you have a crawl space or some real difficult situations, it could run up to $2,000. There are rare exceptions in really large homes that can run over that. Arnie Drennan and his crew are certified by a national agency to design and install the systems. We are mitigating this house. It was tested when it was sold, and the test resulted in 11 pico curies per liter of radon in the house. That's nearly three times the limit set by the Environmental Protection Agency. Long-term exposure at this level can create a cancer risk equal to smoking about a pack of cigarettes a day. My brother's going to be living down there. A radon mitigation system must be installed to make the home safe. If you find that you have an elevated you know, radon concern, it's not that you have to move out of the house. Uh, the effects of, of radon exposure is long-term, so it gives us an opportunity to, you know, to take some uh, proactive measures. Radon mitigation systems vary based on the size and type of home, but they all work by overpowering the natural vacuum under the home to vent the radon safely outside. So it's really a function of the foundation of how it's done, but all revolves around creating a vacuum that's larger than the vacuum created in the soil. The most common method and the one that's found, been found to be most effective is what's called subsoil depressurization um, or active soil depressurization. Active soil depressurization may sound complicated, but it's really quite simple. You drill a hole through the, the slab, you, you put in a fan, and you, and you vent it out the top of the house or the side of the house, and it's that simple. In this case, the mitigation system begins in the townhome's finished basement. One of my objectives always is to try and hide my work. This one will be hidden in a closet in the basement. We'll be pulling up the carpet, taking a concrete coring machine, and coring through the basement slab, the hole in the concrete is the mouth of the soil depressurization system. The PVC pipe prevents the radon from escaping inside and instead vents it up through the basement and out of the home. Here's Bob with a measured piece of pipe that we will actually kind of drive through this hole into the cavity that you saw in the closet. 
Whenever possible, the PVC pipe runs inside the home and vents through the roof. But in this townhome, there isn't any place to hide the pipe once it leaves the basement, so they're running the pipe on the outside of the home. There you go. Come on, let's push on it. Let's go. When in doubt, bring the old man out. <laughs> Wherever the pipe leaves the home, a fan is installed to create the vacuum that pulls the radon through the piping. The fan is the heart of the system. All this is doing is spinning, creating a vacuum, and sucking the air from the pit inside all the way out and up through and into the atmosphere. And then we'll run our pipe like a piece of gutter would all the way up so it looks exactly like and can be painted and blend in as best as we can with the siding on the house. The gutter pipe will keep the radon contained so it doesn't re-enter the home as it passes by the doors and windows. The final step is sealing any openings or cracks in the foundation to force all the radon gas through the pipe. Then, once the fan is turned on, the system is working. What we have here is the finished radon mitigation system. This is a manometer that shows that we are pulling an inch and eight-tenths of a water column of vacuum. We will then run a 48-hour post-mitigation test to verify that the radon is totally gone. As long as the fan is running, any radon below the home will be sucked up through the pipe and safely vented outside. We're not adding more radon into the atmosphere because that radon would have gotten into the air anyways if that house hadn't been there. All we're doing is providing an alternate pathway for it to get into the air. This type of system works for homes with basements and for homes that are built on concrete slabs sitting directly on grade. Homes built on crawl spaces can also be fixed with PVC piping and a fan once the dirt floor of the crawl space is sealed. In the uh, case of a, a crawl space, what's done there is a high density polyethylene sheet is laid on the, the, the dirt floor of, of the crawl space and sealed to the, to the wall. And then a perforated pipe is laid beneath the plastic that is also then connected to a pipe and fan. And that draws a vacuum and pulls that plastic down like shrink wrap, if you will, and draws the radon out as well as moisture. Regardless of the type of foundation, the PVC piping and the fan are essential to removing elevated levels of radon from the home. Simply sealing the cracks in the foundation is not enough. What doesn't work is trying to caulk and seal radon out because we're dealing with the entry of a single atom and it can pass through the smallest of openings. So caulking and sealing by itself is not a standalone technique. It does not work. Still, installing a mitigation system is something homeowners can do themselves if they're willing to do a little research. What we put together, myself and Dr. Burkhart and other contractors, uh, is the do-it-yourself book um, for how to put in radon mitigation systems. And I can tell you that uh, people all over the, the world now have used this book quite successfully. Mitigation systems are fairly straightforward. And there are a lot of uh, handy homeowners who are more than capable of doing all or part of it. If it looks like more than you want to take on yourself, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment provides a list of certified installers like Arnie Drennan who can do the work for you. I strongly recommend you use a certified mitigator. There are two certifying agencies, both NEHA, the National Environmental Health Association, or the National Radon Safety Board. But even with a working system, the EPA still recommends testing your home every two years just to be sure. The only way to know, because you cannot see or smell radon, is to retest that property, it, certainly after you put the system in, and then once every two years thereafter. And it's not just older homes that need to be tested and mitigated for radon. New homes are just as likely to have high radon levels if they're built over a source of radon gas. That's why some builders are choosing to install radon mitigation systems in new homes while they're still under construction. We're just, you know, taking care of it now. Um, it may never be a problem. It may, you know, be smaller than what the EPA allows. It may, you know, never be an issue, but we're just taking care of it, you know, ahead of time. It's a growing trend in Colorado, and radon mitigation systems are actually required in new homes in the city of Fort Collins. It's much better to do it as part of the construction process. To get the pipe beneath this concrete slab, you have to do that before the concrete slab's poured. 
That's what's been done. The pipe was put beneath the concrete slab. We're going to be running it up through this wall and going into the stairway area. You see it's open. We'll be able to do that. And then when they drywall, they'll be able to close it off and it will forever disappear. It will be totally out of sight and it still works excellent. The cost of installing a system like this during construction varies according to the size and type of home, but it's usually no more than a few hundred dollars. It's a small price to pay to keep you and your family safe from lung cancer. Lung cancer is very serious and, um, and very deadly. It's such an easy thing to, to, uh, to prevent. It's easy to test for, it's easy to mitigate, it's not that expensive. And, you know, it seems to make common sense to just uh, to try and reduce that risk. There is no radon police that's going to come around and, and write you a ticket if you've got high radon in your homes. It, but it's a recommendation and it's based on good, solid science. And I urge everybody to, to test their home. It's cheap, it's inexpensive, and the fix is not that expensive. We certainly don't try to scare people. We try to give them the honest story. Here's the risk. Here's the other kinds of risks you have in your life. Is this a risk you want to accept for you and your family or not? The risk is lung cancer, and that's kind of a big risk that I certainly don't want to take. My wife and my kids, they mean everything to me, and so, um, and, and this is so simple. Uh, it just makes sense to do it, to protect them. Jeanette and Jerry are very glad they tested their home. Well, there's nothing to uh, doing the tests. They're pretty, you know, it's, it's very easy to do. And they don't cost much either. They're awaiting the outcome of their long-term test. And if the results come in near the short-term read of seven Pico Curies per liter, they're going to call in a certified mitigator to fix their home. If it's seven, it's, it's a done deal. I'll be calling somebody to have this thing fixed. Jerry's father died of lung cancer, so he wants to be sure their home is safe. Lung cancer is, is so terrible when it, when it, the way it takes you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a prolonged, agonizing death. And I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> you can get a radon test kit for less than it costs for a box of popcorn and a Coke at the movie. Why not? This is a better safe than sorry issue, really is. For more information on radon and radon mitigation, please make a note of these resources. I'm Kathy Sabin. Thanks for watching.